Somebody say, God is able. God is able. I stand before you as I seek the mind of God and listen to the Spirit of the Lord and wait on God's revelation and His illumination. I don't come before you to bring a speech. I don't come before you to entertain. I don't come before you to perform. Neither do I come to bore your patience. But I do come because I think the divine economy is that God puts a man in your midst to remind you of what the enemy wants to seize with amnesia. It, it, would, it, would be, it would be foreign if God only spoke to you one on one exclusively. Now you've been walking with the Lord long enough to know that there are some things that you get from God directly. Amen. And you need to speak to God directly. Amen. Lord, help me up here. Yes, sir. You already know that you can come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses. Amen. And the voice you hear falling on your ear, the Son of God disposes. You already know that he walks with you, yes. and he talks with you, yes. and he will tell you directly that you're his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none of that is on. Oh, you know about your one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Somebody say, I got it. I got it. If you got it, say, I got, I got that. I think that's what the evangelists call it, a personal, a personal relationship with the Lord. Everybody needs to have their personal relationship with God. Thank you, Sister Maria and the Labor Day Committee for getting the man to come and sing that I hope we could get. And when Brother Zicardio Cortez sang that song, I was hoping that the tune would linger only longer as the words did. I want to have my one-on-one -on -one time with you. I want to be in your face all by myself. I just, I, I want to be just with you. I, I got my own version of it. But nobody in there but me and you, Lord, just me and you. And I can't have nobody else in this conversation. It's good to have your one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. And if you got it, say, I got it. But there's another dimension of where God will put the man of God. He doesn't call himself. He doesn't make himself. Oh, How shall they hear without a preacher? Can you imagine what, what your spiritual life would be like if there were no preacher? No bishop, no pastor, no shepherd, no minister, no leader. Can you imagine what a church would be like without a pastor? I know I can't get much help here. Can you imagine what it would be like if there was no one to be the under-shepherd over God's people? But God one day said, gifts are what I want for my people. They will not be healthy long. They won't be sustained long. They'll never, I'm lonely up here, Lord. I'm lonely, I'm lonely. I'm lonely and preach those who go on and preach anyway. So the book said that after he conquered Satan, in Ephesians chapter 4, he led captivity captive. Took captivity itself and locked up the locker. He jailed the jailer. He imprisoned the prisoner. He took, he took, he took the chains and chained them. He shackled all the shackles. He led captivity captive and gave gifts. Gifts from the man. And the some apostles. And to some evangelists, and to some prophets, and to some pastors and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the saints, for the building up of the body, do we all come into the full measure? Stand for that man of God. God loves you enough to put somebody in your path to give you a cure for the amnesia. That is epidemic in our spiritual airspace. I said, 
Because if there's an epidemic in our spiritual airspace, there's an airborne fungus among us to cause us to have a lapse of memory. I guess that's what my job is today. If I would give you my job description, I would just say I'm the reminder man. I'm not, I'm not, I don't write the letters, I just deliver the mail because I'm a mailman. Um, I'm, 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 I'm a forecaster. I don't make the weather, I just report there's a storm ahead. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't, I don't cook the food, I'm just the waiter. I deliver to you from the kitchen. That's my job. I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't write the news, I'm just the one to remind you that what I
You already knew if you didn't fight against them, can somebody say you just have to fight sometime? You are aware that there are some things worth fighting for. I won't be before you long today. I won't be before you long. I'm only preaching today out of necessity. It's only the burden of the gospel. That is all me. I would be glad to share the wealth. I'd be glad to let somebody else bring the mail and admit they could do it, but I'm under a divine assignment. And I'm an emissary from on high. I come from a far land bringing you fresh news on how you can make it home. Some things you gotta fight for. You cannot always be passive. You can't always be neutral. You can't be fatalistic and leave everything to change. And you gotta make up your mind that your health is worth fighting for. You have to make up your mind, I say yes, Lord. You gotta make up your mind that your education is worth fighting for. Don't let them just take your property. Your property is worth fighting for. Most of y'all have never been in jail, but I've been there a few times. For the right and for the wrong, your justice and your freedom is worth fighting for. You better get off of me because I'm going somewhere. In fact, your family is worth fighting for. Your children are worth fighting for. Your marriage is worth fighting for. Your sanity, your sanity, just as dizzy as a bed bug or crack, bipolar medication won't kill everything. You gotta make up your mind, I'm gonna fight for my own sanity. Say yes. You, 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 you want to make sure that your future, your destiny, is worth fighting for. And I want to tell all you preachers, uh, 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 all of you missionaries, all of y'all that carry the word, but not only you, all of you prime members, all of you ushers, all of you Sunday school workers, all of you youth workers. Some of y'all have moved into a pathetic state of indifference and neutrality and apathy. And the other day, the other is just robbing you blind day by day, right in the house of God. You gotta make up your mind that your ministry is worth fighting for. I'm gonna tell you the biggest one. I feel an anointing now, because that's what I gotta remind you. Your anointing. Tell somebody your anointing. Tell them. No, tell somebody your anointing is worth fighting for. The enemy comes to steal. Gonna just let it rob you. The enemy comes to kill. Are you just going to be a sitting duck? The enemy comes to destroy. You let him do that without a fight. Make up your mind, he's not going to rob me. He's not going to kill me. He'll never destroy me because greater is he that is in me. I don't want to preach this now. Greater is he that is in me now than he that is in the world. And I because I don't mind winning. Lift your hand and just say, I refuse to lose this fight. You need to lift your hand and say, I refuse to lose this fight. You do not have to be a statistic. You don't have to be a casualty of war. You don't have to be a defeated number. You don't have to just be going through the motion. You don't have to just go through the same old, same old and acting like you got it together when you're being chipped away day by day. Say yes. The kingdom of God has suffered violence until now. But now the violent must take it by force. You gotta fight if you're gonna win. I said you gotta fight. And you don't fight like I'm fighting right now just with volume. You don't fight just with words. You don't fight with emotion. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And every thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, lift your hand and say, I don't mind fighting. You missed it. Try it again to the musicians who followed it. I don't mind fighting. Too slow, way too slow. You gotta make up your mind that you're not gonna be slow. Too late now. Let's just stay with me, found the leader. 
Jeremiah, but you're not going to always be coming in last place. Why, why do you want to wait until the cow is out of the barn before you close the gate? Get, 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 get that, get, 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 in every battle, I'm going to win every battle, and I refuse to lose a war that God said I have the victory for. And they said, I think I'm doing the right thing to fight Caesar. I'm going to get, I'm going to get me about a hundred thousand warriors. Sharp shooters. They know how to handle the spear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That ought to help me with you. Yeah. I'm going to pay them well. Yeah. Because money is an incentive. Yeah. Money is an incentive. Yeah. Isn't that an incentive for you? Yeah. That's why you're going to work. You're not fooling me. No, you're not fooling me. You're not going to work because you like people. No. That's not why you're going. You're not going to work because they have, because it's a pleasant atmosphere, Google Eyes. You're not, you're not going to work because you've been there so long, you don't want to disappoint, disappoint your employer. You go to work for one primary reason. More money, more money, more money, more money. And if they cut off the money, how many of y'all would still go to work every day? You go to work because they pay you. And, and, and Amaziah thought he had checked that square. I paid them well. I've organized them into groups. I've taken the cream of the crop, recruited those that are over 20 years old, that are not too old or too young. We're getting ready to fight this thing. Yeah. And I've made alliances with the Northern Kingdom. Yeah. And I've got my backup in place. Yeah. And now I'm ready to go. And then the man of God, man of God. told him, you don't need all of that. That's not going to be your solution. No, no matter how many people you hire, no matter how much money you spend, no matter how many people you know, there's a missing ingredient. You don't need them. You picked up some dead weight. There's some persons you would do better without. You know what help me here? When you tell somebody you need to drop your dead weight. You think Shaq is going to give you a happy marriage? Do you really think you gotta take off your clothes to have a good friend? I know I'm gonna hold this preacher. I know I'm gonna hold this preacher. Do you really do you really think do you really think you gotta take some marijuana to get some happiness? Do you really think you gotta have a high ball, a margarita, and a nightcap to get some real rest? Get off of you, get off. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
He's able to do that. Go turn that now to Acts 20 and 32. He said, I commend you unto the love of God that is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among those who are sanctified. God is able to build you up. And in Romans 14 and 4, Paul says, God is able to make you stand. To make you stand. The difference there is stabilize your life. He's able to stabilize you. He's able to give you balance. I'm talking to somebody right now. You need the stabilizing power of God. Able to give you balance. Able to give you a sense of equilibrium. God is able to keep your mind from shifting with every wind and every doctrine. I want to say that right now. Stabilize my mind. Put your imagination in order. Cause your dreams to be godly dreams. Stabilize you to the bitterness of the to the grudges are gone. Stabilize your mind until you're not so self-destructive. And you have the cure for a don't care attitude. The saints should never say, a saint should never say whatever. He's able to take the whatever disposition. If I do, I do. If I don't, I don't. You do what you want to do, I do. God, that's a sense of instability. No focus. Come on, dudes. Just preach it. Just preach like you got to preach the devil out of the minds that have become destabilized. He's able to make you stand. Give you posture. Give you focus. Make your life a trajectory. Give you perfect alignment until you can say, I have a do right spirit and I've got a made of mine. Yeah. And in 1 Corinthians 10 and 3, he says, He's able. He's able. He is able. When you're tempted, He's able. When you're overloaded, He is able. There's no temptation to come upon you, but that's common to man. But God is faithful. And God is able, he's able to make a way of escape that you might be able to bear it. He's able to give you an escape. And finally, and finally in Hebrews 7 and 25, he's able. The Bible says he's able to save to the uttermost. God is able to save to the uttermost. And that, that really would say this, Sister Diane, he completely saves. He saves in the beginning. He saves. Go on and preach those things. Go on and preach. Just preach. He's able to save. Save you out of your dungeon. Save you out of your chaos. Save you out of your boredom. Save you out of your pride. He's able to save you out of your backsliding. He's able to save you out of your fear. He's able to save you out of your mistakes. Now come on. He's able to save you sinking. And so Peter said, I know I'm a believer, but I'm down in deep waters and stormy weather. So he said, no, oh, save me. Save. And I just want to close because my time is up, and I think that's not all I'm going to leave you with. But I want to tell you that the God that I serve, and if you know it, just say, I'm glad I know it. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Somebody in this house today, Maybe you'll hold out in this house. Your shoulders get over bruised with the burdens that you're bearing. Your mind may be complex until it's almost numb. Yes, it's almost numb with decisions that you must make. Obviously, preach fast. Some of you, your heart is heavy until you feel like you're carrying. So, and some of y'all have cared so long, preach God, until you don't even care if you don't care anymore. But God sent somebody 
and not honor the one who's equally give you more than me. I like y'all. I love y'all. Y'all in my heart.